Happy birthday song to is going to be happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to us. Yeah. And then at the end, we're going to do the prayer that's on the back of your quick plan. Oh. We'll end with that one. Uh, but we will sing happy birthday. We'll light the candle. The singers will come around. And we'll sing the song. Go out the plane. And I'll pray to say that Holy Spirit. Well, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. We're having a Pentecost party. A Penta what? We'll explain that later. We welcome all the families. We have some catechists with us. We have Miss Liz with us. And we're able to do this. We just want to be able to chance to greet you and to prepare for the great feast of Pentecost, which is considered the birthday of our church. But we'll explain that later, too. So. Today is an ordinary Wednesday, but we're going to make it extraordinary by celebrating this time in the church year. Did you know that it's still Easter? Yeah, I'm sure. You put the stuff away and the candy's gone. But the Easter season is for 50 days. Last week, we celebrated the Ascension. Remember, Easter is when Jesus, after Jesus had died, he suffered for us, he died, he rose again. Well, he would appear once in a while to his followers. And sometimes they didn't recognize him. But other times they did, and he would just do something powerful, whether he spoke their name or he broke bread, and then he would quickly disappear. But he warned them, I am going to go back to the Father. He said, and I will send you an advocate. What's an advocate? Okay, well, it's also known as the paraclete. What's a paraclete? All right, let's just think helper. And Jesus kept saying, I'm going to send you a helper, even though I have to go back to the Father. And just like before Jesus suffered and died, he kept warning them, but they didn't really understand. Well, 50 days, 10 days after the ascension, 50 days after his resurrection, something powerful happened. Now, Pentecost is a word that means 50th, 50 days, and the Jewish people celebrated Pentecost. It was like a harvest time. So they were in Jerusalem. But Pentecost became a brand new way of celebrating God. Let me explain things. Before Jesus left, he promised to send this helper, this advocate, this paraclete, but his followers didn't understand. Let me read you from the book of Acts in the Bible. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing. And it filled the whole house where they were seated. And then they saw what looked like tongues of fire. Hmm, I wonder what that looked like. Did it look like this? Did that, and yours too? Yeah, we had tongues of fire. That's what it looked like. Look at all these tongues of fire. Safely distanced, every place we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And it seemed to touch each person. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. It enabled them to speak in many languages. And there were Jews living in Jerusalem and the religious people from all over, and they heard the believers speaking in different languages. 
La venida del Espíritu Santo. Cuando llegó la fiesta de Pentecostés, todos los creyentes se encontraban reunidos en un mismo lugar. De repente, un gran ruido que venía del cielo, como de un viento fuerte, resonó en toda la casa donde ellos estaban. Y se les apreciaron lenguas como de fuego que se repitieron. Y, so y sobre cada uno de ellos se asentó una. Y todos quedaron llenos de Espíritu Santo y comenzaron a hablar en otras lenguas. Según el Espíritu había que hablar. Isn't that amazing? In fact, the followers of Jesus were really in that upper room, somewhat afraid, but they were spending time praying because Jesus had ascended and they really didn't understand till the Holy Spirit came. And those doors were opened and they went out. And Peter was the one who explained all the many history that brought him to this point. And when he told them that they were responsible in some way for Jesus' death, people were hurt. And they said, what can we do? And he said, well, repent and then be baptized. 3,000 people were baptized that day. That's not very easy for us to do, 3,000 people. But that is how our church began. In fact, the disciples, the followers of Jesus, became missionaries. That's what we're called to do. We're called to go out and to tell others about Jesus. We're called to be missionaries. Now, doesn't it sound similar to what you're going through right now? We've been in an upper room. We've been told we can't go out like we used to. We can't do the things that we'd like to. We hear news. It's like hearing authorities tell us things that make us somewhat scared and afraid. But we don't need to be. In our homes, with our families, even if we are alone, we have the Holy Spirit. And we can spend this time praying. We need to be grateful because this is actually a quiet time to hear that voice, hear the Holy Spirit within us. And now I have a question for you. When you finally get a chance to go back to do the things you'd like to, when you're out of your upper room, you may not go out and be crazy because you know the followers of Jesus, when they received the Holy Spirit, they went out, people thought they were drunk. They were so happy and joyful. But when you're able to go out and begin to do the things you'd like, you missed, and see the people that you missed. Let's take a moment to think about what is the first thing you would like to do when that happens, and how would you bring Jesus to other people? How could you be a missionary in the world? How have you changed so that when you're able to go out to what you used to be involved in, how will you bring the love and the story of Jesus to other people? Take a minute to think about that. And later today or tonight, when you're at dinner with your family, all of you could talk about that. You could talk about the ways that you can bring Jesus to others. Miss Liz, would you explain some of that? How we'd like, they've been in an upper room so that their moms and dads can understand too. Sure. Eh, ahorita podemos poner un ejemplo muy claro en este momento lo que estamos viviendo de la pandemia, que estamos en las casas, que no podemos salir, entonces ahí es cuando podemos pedirle al Espíritu Santo o es cuando el Espíritu Santo nos da la fortaleza, nos da la paz, nos da la, la tranquilidad para saber afrontar eso y poder seguir adelante. Entonces una de las preguntas es, cuando termine esto, ¿qué vamos a hacer? ¿Cómo vamos a aportar a las demás personas? ¿En qué hemos cambiado? Y la idea es que cada día seamos mejor y debemos lo mejor de nosotros a los demás gracias a que al Espíritu Santo now some of you received this in the mail and if you made it that's great it was a way to show that the Holy Spirit has many symbols different ways for us to understand it remember in the story in the Bible you heard that tongues of fire came upon each one of them that's one way that the Holy Spirit is represented Another way are doves. And this goes back to the baptism of Jesus. Because when Jesus was baptized and he came out of the water, 
Jesus was baptized just as a sign to those that he was about to enter into ministry. Jesus wasn't baptized as we were. Jesus had no sin. But it was a witness to other people of how powerful his ministry would be. And so when he came out of the water, they heard a voice from his father that said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And then they saw what looked like a dove. So that began to help people recognize the Holy Spirit. And here is an illustration, a beautiful print of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And see, this represents the wind. And here, once again, a dove. And here, the tongues of fire. And they're all seated. Do you notice how their hands are connected? Because they were spending time in prayer. Which seems to be like the pause we've had to do to be at home and pray and focus in new ways. But because of the Holy Spirit and the fire and the beautiful way that the Holy Spirit guides us, we can still have peace and joy and hope, even when things seem a little bit scary. Thank you, Liz. Okay, let's go back to your flame. Now, remember that the followers of Jesus were locked in the room, and that sounds like what we've had to do for many weeks. But you received the Holy Spirit at your baptism. The disciples were so filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that they left and they were on fire. And because of what they told everyone, our church grew and grew and grew so that today, on this day of May 27th, 2020, we are still church. That's how much it's grown. Millions and millions and millions of people heard what Jesus did, wanted to be baptized, and wanted to be followers of him. Now, you're a disciple too. You're asked to be a missionary, a follower of Jesus. Since we're supposed to be very careful with fire, this is a different type of fire. But this kind represents an energy that fires us up and tells us what to say, how to act, who to be with other people. One of the ways that you're able to learn why this is important and how the Holy Spirit can guide you is by doing your religious formation work, praying at home, and listening to others who have taught you. So this flame is to help you remember that the Holy Spirit is with you all the time. The Holy Spirit helps you to be fired up with the love of Jesus and the love of others. And the Holy Spirit helps us to be brave, kind, and loving, even when we don't feel like it or are afraid or unsure. We'd like to do a special prayer with you that has gestures. I'm going to invite some of the catechists up to join us. So let's begin this prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. We celebrate that Jesus' promise was fulfilled on Pentecost when the coming of the Holy Spirit came upon Mary and the disciples. And together we will do... Come, Come and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Come. Beautiful. We are grateful for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the baptism and we hope to be fortified with the confirmation of the Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. We remember Pentecost as the beginning of the church's mission with the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come. 
Nosotros sabemos que podemos pedirle al Espíritu Santo que nos ayude, nos guíe y nos inspire cada día. Ven, Espíritu Santo, ven. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us each day. Guide our path to love and truth. Bring peace to our hearts. Help us follow Jesus as his disciples. And help us bring his love and peace to all we meet. And we all pray together at as the end. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. To tell you more about the story of Pentecost, we have a wonderful book that someone will read. I didn't want to come. We have permission to show this book because the publisher said that this may be used. This is a wonderful book written by a mom as part of the Presbyterian Church in North Carolina. Today we have a unique way that we're going to tell the story. By using streamers. So we're going to wave these streamers throughout the story. We encourage you, if you have something red at home, or maybe even yellow or orange, to wave with us as we for this story. You'll notice we are also wearing red, which is the color for Pentecost. It's the color for the Holy Spirit, because we remember on Pentecost that the Holy Spirit comes to us, and it is the church's birthday. So join us as we read The Day When God Made Church. This is The Day When God Made Church by Rebecca McLeod Hutto. We all gather and wait. Jesus is gone and we are nervous. Everyone is curious to meet the one Jesus would send us. The room is dark. Men and women, old people, young people, and animals wait. They wait for something to happen. Do you see the fire? Suddenly, the animals move with excitement. What's that noise? It grows louder. It feels like wind, and it pounds like drum beats. It fills the room loud and full. Then the room grows brighter. Something hot and blazing shines on us. Darkness is gone, and fire fills the cold space. Now we feel warm inside our bodies. Smiles paint our faces. We all know something new is happening. We feel our hearts change inside. Is this what Jesus promised? A new sound comes. Words. Words like raindrops fall across the room. Some with loud sounds. Some with quiet whispers. Words like drum beats. Words that tiptoe through the air. People crowd around. They hear the words. They recognize the languages. Something new is happening. The Holy Spirit has arrived. Everyone around me begins to ask questions. Who is this Holy Spirit? What is happening? Why do we feel so different? Why do we hear so many languages? And then Peter stands. He walks around looking at each of us. I wonder, is he going to speak? Then Peter opens his mouth. He starts to preach. His powerful voice fills the spaces around us and between us. Friends, something new is happening. Jesus has given us a wonderful gift. Don't be surprised if you all start to preach and dream too. Young and old, men and women, we are all called to something new. God is changing us so that we can see old things in a new way. We all listen as Peter tells the story of God's love in Jesus. He reminds us all what Jesus taught us. We hear again how Jesus loves us. Do you see Mary and baby Jesus and the water turning into wine? We remember when Jesus healed our friends and told us stories and shared good news, like how Jesus is the good shepherd. We listen as Peter describes the day, that horrible day when Jesus hung on the cross, and we remember how sad we were. The dark clouds covered the sky, the earth shook, and Jesus died to save us. But our sadness did not last forever. Peter reminded us that soon there was joy and laughter and dancing. 
Jesus came back to us. God raised him from the dead and gave us new life. We all hear the word Peter preaches, and the Holy Spirit changes us. The rivers of baptism pour out, do you see the dove? And we feel God's love. It's a love for us, our families, our friends, and even people who are far away. People, people everywhere all hear this good news. We all begin this new life together. Do you see all the people gathered together? We become a new family. We share our things, we break bread together, and we worship God. This is what we call the day of Pentecost. It's the day when church was born. Men and women, boys and girls, people from everywhere, even cats and dogs. We are all filled with the Holy Spirit as we worship Jesus, alive and risen. Alleluia! Thank you for joining in the story with us. We hope that you have a happy Pentecost, and we hope that you celebrate this special day with your family, too. And from both of us, happy Pentecost! Christians everywhere celebrate this feast day this Sunday. This is how our Christian church, our Catholic Christian church, began. And that, see the beautiful illustrations of that story? And as she pointed out, there was the dove, the sign of the Holy Spirit. On Sunday, May 31st, this Sunday, it is the real Pentecost. So we're going to have a little celebration. Miss Renee is going to play a song for us. And um, some of us are going to sing along, uh, those who can. Our beautiful chorus. And um, we'd like to tell you that on Sunday, especially if you have your flame, and later we're going to end with the prayer of the Holy Spirit, why don't you use this flame in prayer with your family on Sunday and have your own party. Celebrate that you as a family are church. You, that was your first church. And then think of our larger church, the parish. All those we haven't been able to meet with, but we will very soon. Just be patient. And so you can have a special day. You can have a birthday party for the church. Have a special dessert, have cake. Say the prayer together with your family, asking the Holy Spirit to come upon your family and to come upon you, to guide you. And when we're all able to meet again and to have a new way of living, you will be able to bring that new way to other people just as the Holy Spirit guides you. So we're just gonna play some music right now and then we'll end with a little special part of our celebration.
arguments for me. And can you sense the beauty of the Spirit right now? All we do is say, come Holy Spirit, come. And that can always be within us. I'm going to invite the catechists up to say our final prayer. And then after that, we will enjoy our own birthday party. So boys and girls and parents, um, if you would take your flame card, and on the back there is the prayer to the Holy Spirit. We have it in English and Spanish. We will say it first in Spanish and then in English. We will say the prayer together. We also have with us Father Larry who gets his own flame too. There you go. Come on over. There you go. So, together, feeling that beautiful sense of love, peace, and joy, as the music mentioned, let us together say the prayer to the Holy Spirit. We'll begin in Spanish. Invocación al Espíritu Santo. Ven, Espíritu Santo. Llénanos, llena, llena los corazones de tus fieles y enciende en ellos el fuego de tu amor. Envía tu Espíritu Creador y renueva la faz de la tierra. Oh Dios, que has iluminado los corazones de tus hijos con la luz del Espíritu Santo, haznos dóciles a sus inspiraciones para gustar siempre el bien y gozar de su consuelo. Por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amén. And together, in English, come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the, the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall be the faces of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolation. And so, we celebrate the birthday of the church. And you can pretend how delicious this is. <laughs> and we're going to sing happy birthday to the church, and the words will be, happy birthday to us, happy birthday to us, Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday to us. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to us. And now, Father Larry will blow out the flame. He is going to blow out the flame, which will now go forth for all of us. Happy Pentecost, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Yay. Yay. At, every, at every birthday party or party, we always play pin the tail on the donkey. So you can play pin the flame or pin the tongue on your wall somewhere to look at it. Okay. <laughs> also, if anyone remembers the famous uh, uh, movie... Uh, about the cheerleaders, you don't say, come Holy Spirit. You say, come Holy Spirit. You have to move the spirit fingers. So, remember that. Thank you. Okay. We want to thank our catechist, Miss Renee, Father Larry, and all of you. Thank you for being so faithful. And on Sunday, remember, have a celebration of yourself, with yourself and your family, your church, and then we hope to see you soon. God bless you, and ready? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Thank you.